time. Um, I was particularly interested in what you've been doing around the idea of formative practice or formative assessment. Um, you've done some things that allow for some student agency and choice within there about when and how much they're doing. And you're also working in some differentiation techniques I think other people would be interested in. So I'll start with the question, how did you come to the conclusion that you needed or wanted to give your students more formative practice? Well, when we're in person in the classroom uh, and I give students an assignment, I can kind of walk around and look over their shoulder and see where they're struggling. And it isn't as important for me to have something that they're turning in all the time because I have informal feedback. Um, Move to a couple of different things. One, I'm doing some Google form check-ins, but the biggest change that I've made since going to the distance learning is I've been using a homework program called Quest. And uh, that allows me to see exactly, um, you know, what the what the students are doing, which okay. basically means that they all have. Um, if I have one question, there might be um, ten different types of the same question, where they're just changing um, some of the numbers in there, so every student gets an individual assignment. And you teach physics so that people know, and um, essentially you've got um, some software that is question banks. And those question banks uh, change what each individual student will see. Might change the numbers, might change the question in a little different way, sticks with the topic, but comes up with those different ideas. As it's and do. Um, the other thing that I've been doing for that um, in order to differentiate within, within the, the assignment is, um, I've told them they don't have to do all of the problems. And right. so I think that's like one of the things they like, they get to choose which problems to do. So if I were to assign 10 problems in the quest, it might be three level three questions, uh, a couple of level five questions, a couple of level seven questions. And I tell them you only have to get five questions correct. And so I think that it kind of brings the assignment to wherever the student is. And it's more of a challenge by choice. Um, I really want to make sure I'm not wasting my students' time with formative assessments. It should be long enough that I can see um, what they understand and what they don't understand, and it should be short enough that they have time to move on to other subjects. And um, what insights have you gained from this experiment with differentiated practice, formative practice in a uh, having some choice, some student choice. Kids are pretty good at choosing which problems to be doing. Um, they kind of know when um, when they should be pushing themselves. And uh, I do sometimes have to like call out a student who um, who I know should be doing those level seven problems. Um, and then I think the only other trouble that I've had with it is some students are like, hey, I'm spending too much time on my homework. And I'm like, well, I told you you didn't have to do all of the problems, but they're kind of like that overachiever. <laughs> so right. they're doing all of the problems. I'm like, so when you get to five points, just stop. <laughs> so giving them even, these are 10th graders we're talking about, but a time frame to work from where uh, on average, do you have like a time limit that you kind of say roughly half an hour on this stuff? I, I try to make it um, like what a mid-level student would take about 25 minutes. Um, okay. And, and my last question has to do, you have Quest, right? Which is yeah. a science, you know, subject specific uh, product that you right. can subscribe to and use these things. And not everybody is going to have that, uh, but you're not always going to have that either. Can you see yourself adapting this approach of like five of the 10 choices and leveling and all those kind of things with something like a Google form or even, you know, a paper quiz that you hand to students when we're back in person? Yeah, I definitely would do the same kind of thing on, on paper um, and, and let the kids choose which levels they're going, they're going to be doing. Um, I think more than ever, we're really conscious of the student's time and that shouldn't stop when we get back into the classroom. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that um, I can really push my kids who are kind of uh, my, my high flyers is I've got some extension stuff. So we were talking about diffraction today, but like kind of low level, really easy, basic stuff. Um, but they might be interested in something that was higher level with like x-ray diffraction. And that gets into, um, you know, or they could start talking about like some quantum theory stuff. So those kids can see that this real basic um, building block of diffraction can have some very high level applications. 
And so that allows them to jump into that. Um, and then I also have a section for extra help that kind of really simplifies things. Um, just a few videos or a website that'll have some, some simulations so they can jump into that. So if they were willing to spend 10 extra minutes a day on physics, my kids who need the extra help have you know, some resources there and the kids who have the extension stuff, um, my high flyers can, can look at some extension stuff to see where this will lead later. Um, the one